Now, rock socketed pulse, uh, rock socketed pulse. So this one straightforward is the pulse will be socketed in the rock. Uh, some majority, we, uh, I have not, uh, how do I say, see that upon ground surface, you hit rock. Okay, if, if in the ground surface, you hit rock in the first place, you don't need more power. Okay, so this is only when we have a thick overlay of a deposit over the rock, so we need to socket into the rock. So rock socketed friction, right, is usually we use 0.2 to 0.3 square root of the unconfined compressive strength. Okay, I believe all of you know what is unconfined compressive strength, huh? So base resistance, we use 3 to 6.6 .6 with the mean of 4.8. Actually, do not need to be concerned to memorize this number because later on, remember, this is just a prelim design we are doing. We will probably need to do the, like, the power test to establish what is the mobilized end bearing and friction. Okay, so you do not need to memorize the number. Okay, it's just a, a, a prelim guide, a start-off point for you to use. Now, question, uh, can the end bearing be greater than the, the concrete strength? Okay, I'll ask Mark Tio. Mark Tio? Hi. Hi. Can you introduce yourself? You are? I'm undergraduate. Undergraduate. Okay. Yeah. You know what is concrete strength, right? Yes. Okay. So the question is asking you, uh, can the rock end bearing uh, be higher than the concrete strength? Look at the, this equation. Uh, the end bearing is about 4.8. You take it 5. 5 of the square root of the uncompressive strength of the rock. Do you know what is uncompressive strength of the rock? No. You also don't know, right? What? You, 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 you wish you graduate, you third year or fourth year? Or you second year? Third. Third year, okay. Third year, I can forgive you. Never mind. I choose another one. Uh, Vincent So? So Hang Guat. Vincent So Hang Guat. Sorry? Are you here? Vincent? Vincent, are you here? No, no answer. Okay, next one. Uh, Siva Ruban. Sorry, did I pronounce your name correctly? Siva Ruban? Sorry? The Lepadical win now. Maybe one week later. Siva Ruban? The winter control can move really but in my place. Since I have the table now. No, no. No, if somebody is talking behind, can you off your mic? Well, that Mary Lorena Wang here. I don't know who to ask. <laughs> Never mind. Min Win. Okay, Min Win. Min Win, are you here? Min Win. Yes. Min Win. So can the end bearing be greater than the concrete strength? Uh, yes. Yes, right? Yes. If the end bearing is greater than the concrete strength, what does it mean? Uh, concrete will be... Sorry, the con... What does it mean? The concrete cannot be... go through to the rocket, uh, rock. <laughs> we'll stop at the, at the base. Okay. I don't want to answer your question. Maybe you still don't understand what I'm trying to ask. You just take note of this thing. Remember the first, I talked about the load transfer, end bearing only, and this thing. This thing had to do with that. I will do a complete answer to all this, but you just read mind this question because you will find this thing. You, you, you will find this kind of situation happening whereby hey, you calculate your end bearing edge greater than your concrete strength. Okay? Now. Uh, yes. For those of y'all who are used to the CP4 or VS8002 or 804, uh, now we are in the era of EC7. But in, 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 in some countries, uh, in some countries, they are still using the, the Commonwealth countries, they are still using the, the BS standard, okay? So now I just do a quick comparison. For those of you who, like me, try when doing the conversion time, uh, we need to... The lingo, it's just a lingo, you know? It's just like from speaking... 
uh, one dialect to another dialect, you just need to convert the lingo. Okay, so what is the lingo? In CP4, right, when we talk about unfactored load, when people tell hey, this what is the unfactored load or the allowable load, in EC7, it actually means the characteristic load. Okay, when it's factor load, it means design. When it's called load, it's called action. When you call surplusity, it's actually resistant. You need to actually remember this, or else you will have difficulty reading the code. Okay, you will have difficulty reading the code. When I did my interview for ACJ, I actually had to reread the whole EC7 to, 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 to have a grasp of it, to, 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 how do I say, to able to explain myself, even though I can understand the, the, the concept, but I still need to under, remember this definition. Now, ultimate load means design action. Okay, allowable load or working load means characteristic action. Likewise, uh, ultimate and allowable can say means design or characteristic resistance. Now, the next one is the most fundamental difference between CP4 and EC7 is that we, we take a factor on the capacity, okay, to make sure that the allowable capacity or the factor down capacity is actually higher than the allowable load. But in EC7, right, we want the design resistance to be higher than the design action. Means it's all ultimate, it's all based on a, it's in the ultimate stress approach. Okay? Now, trick question, uh, which resistance is higher? Characteristic resistance or design resistance? Oh, yeah, I, I don't want to ask really. I didn't know enough time if I continue to ask like that. You all just ask, you, you, you should know the answer. Which one is higher? Characteristic or design? Now, on science, science investigation, on science investigation, EC7 actually talk about the spacing. Okay, what is the spacing? Whether it's a grid, you should follow a grid system or a spacing. And also talk about the depth. They even have a, 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 a graph, a diagram to show you how to actually ascertain the, this thing. But this, this is a come to a very interesting question because you know why when they do when they do SI, right? The people who do SI, the consultant or the owner who call SI, when they call for SI or soil investigation, they don't know how long the pulse will going to be because they have not started the design. So for the soil investigation people, they won't know where to stop. Okay? They only follow a general procedure. Uh, this one I must ask Dennis later. I'll ask Dennis. Okay, I might remind this one because of LTA project. Now, current practice under the circular 2016. Interesting. We divide the, we, we categorize the soil investigation program according to the height of the buildings. Okay, more than 10 is more stringent, less than 10 is less stringent. Common sense. Okay. Now, it did not talk about the Vida that we are talking. Vida is considered how many stories? Vida have no story actually. Okay, we didn't talk about the, the deep excavation for, for, for tunneling, for, for car and cover tunnel. We also never talk. The, the circular never talk about that. Okay, on what is the depth or what is the spacing. Generally, of course, there is a spacing talking governed by the guide whereby if you notice, uh, in the EC7 for special structures, uh, bridges, stacks, machinery foundation, oh, two to six borehole per foundation. Okay, for linear structures like tunnel, right, a spacing of twenty to two hundred meters. Why you notice the the room is quite big, twenty to two hundred for the designer to design. You know? So if the owner press you to to reduce the cost, you plan for two hundred meter. Then you have a lot of surprises for the two hundred meter. A typical MRT station is about 200 meter by length. So technically speaking, follow the code, uh, one ball hole can settle it, um, or two ball hole can settle, okay, along the, the, the wall. Okay, so this leads to the room to the designer to play. Now, come back to the structure capacity. Last time, structure capacity for ball hole, very easy one. 0.25 SCU, not more than 7.5 MPA. Okay. But now, uh, a slightly more complicated for EC7. I just summarize this thing. This one is actually from extracted from uh, the one of the BCA seminar. You just remember this number, 0.3636 FCK for lightly reinforced. That means it's not full uh, it's not a full cage, okay? And the area 
and the area of the cross section area of the power you have to reduce accordingly depending on the diameter okay so you just remember this is a uh, the difference and if you notice a difference actually in some time e ec2 let you use a higher structure capacity more than 7.5 mpa and this poses a problem uh. actually this poses a problem many people don't notice uh. when you use a very high structure capacity meaning you allow the power to take a higher load okay you because your structure can take uh, so your structure can take so you tend to use a higher load uh, later i'll ask you uh, and you will think another question now from ltcdc uh, for ltcd well ltcd is the best it's a typical singaporean uh, mentality uh, kiasu mentality everything take the worst of the both All right so you take 0.25 and check ec2 EC then you use a less of both Okay. Now, same thing uh, for the reinforcement. CP4 say minimum 0.5%. The for EC2 actually depending on the diameter, they will use a different recommend a different percentage. Now, the length of reinforcement. Now, remember the Shanghai Lotus Riverside apartment, the collapse. You notice they use the spun power, right? And in Singapore context, we seldom use spun power because of the displacement issue we seldom use. That's why you use ball power. The EC7 actually require, according to the EN, uh, the EN1536, the execution of ball power, actually require that the length of the reinforcement must go a minimum 10 meter. Usually, any powering contractor here, in my last two seminars, there are many power contractors. Any power contractor, there are people from Keller, anybody from Keller, from resource polling, or wherever polling, anyone? No, no power contractor. Okay, so, so in the Singapore contact, usually one length is 12 meter, the reinforcement. Uh, and we usually want it to go through all the socket. Okay, this is important, huh? even though you have we have no excavation. Uh, we also have no stockpile like them. We also want it to be happened. This is now governed by the code. Okay, so you know the intent, huh? you will relate to the Shanghai, the collapse. This is to prevent any lateral force to the piles so that it can attend, it can actually withstand a certain bending within the piles. So what if the reinforcement extends all the way to the power toe? Okay, according to the code, uh, if you fully reinforce, actually your structural capacity can increase accordingly. Okay, but I'm not going to touch on that one. That one more on the structure part. Now, on testing, uh, on testing. But now only 81 people. Uh. Interesting. Okay. So in EC7, they call it trial pulse, actually. They call it the trial pulse. Okay, they don't call it the automatic, they call it trial pulse. Uh. This is the reason why we need to do a trial pulse. In our current context, same thing. We also divide the, pulse, the testing schedule according to the number of story. So there are ultimate load tests, non-working load tests, and non-destructive integrity tests. I already specified the number the number of percentage, whichever is greater. For a, a not so high buildings, usually they only the minimum requirement is just a working load test. Okay, like your landed houses, okay, this kind of thing, or two, three story buildings or factories, usually they just do a working load test or PDA test. Now, do you know that the more load tests you do, you can actually reduce the power length? Okay, this one must ask the master to take student. Uh, let me ask this guy. Oh, Eugene. Okay, I want to ask. Eugene Tan. Are you here, Eugene Tan? Eugene Tan? No. Eugene Tan is not here. Oh, Charles, you are here, Charles. Charles Dixon. Charles. Charles is my RU. How come you're here? 
Okay. Nobody want to answer. My last two cup are more responsive. Okay, now the okay, this is LTA again, uh, LTA. LTA what well, is even a more detailed testing schedule, right? Depending on the kind of structures. Okay, and uh, whether it's above ground or underground, they divide accordingly. And the types of whether there's a barrier pile or low bearing wall, they actually have a different uh, testing schedule. You you can actually go and download LTA civil design criteria from the website, it's free. And I urge students, uh, those people who are coming up to work, while looking up for work, uh, you go and read out all this information because it will help you to shine if, if you know all these things uh, in your interview.